Buonasera, hello world, uh, greetings from the Global Village. I think we are live, we are live on Facebook and YouTube, uh, we are still alive. So I will uh, rapidly check the Facebook page, the Facebook group, uh, and I see some reactions, uh, it looks everything good, I think, and hopefully, yes, Andrew, Mr. Roshinshenko, Andrew, thank you very much. And so uh, we are all live. Yes, yes, we're, uh, we're getting started. Okay, in just a few seconds, uh, we are checking the YouTube channel kindly provided by the McLuhan Institute and Andrew McLuhan. So we are uh, uh, streaming live on uh, Marshall McLuhan's Facebook group and YouTube uh, uh, channel, the McLuhan Institute YouTube channel. So I think we, we are all set. I'm just uh, warming up and see that uh, that uh, Masood, hello Masood, I see you Paolo, but not the others, no worry, the others are coming, so little by little we will get into the into this uh, situation let me see i think um, i can see your comments there uh, so masood um, mr fire falcons uh, thank you for joining us uh, hello paolo and everybody facebook user so this is a technical uh, uh, announcement again uh, feeling kind of medium tonight yes we are uh, just one reminder before getting started. So if you want to show your name and profile into the comments that you are going to pick up for discussion, so make sure to visit uh, streamyard.com slash Facebook. So it means that basically you can authorize uh, um, our um, uh, broadcasting platform to use your name into the uh, into the comments. Okay, so I'll show you. Um, here is Edelton from YouTube. Edelton from YouTube, Masood. Okay, which is now here, right? Masood, hello. And if you don't authorize uh, um, StreamYard, uh, you will look this way, Facebook user, so anonymous Facebook user interaction. So please, you are kindly invited to uh, check it out and uh, possibly, uh, again, so this is just a very uh, simple technical uh, tips to show your name and profile on the comments in the stream. Uh, please visit StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Okay. All right, and this is Paolo Granata from Toronto, from the Global Village. I'm so excited. And, and by the way, so let me start with a kind of dramatic opening for the first uh, Monday night webinar ever <laughs> organized. And so we are very, we are very uh, excited and well, to, to start this kind of adventure. I'll say later a few words. In the meantime, I saw you are uh, uh, coming and joining. Okay, okay, okay. Sinki Roca, greetings from Colombia. Wow, that's so impressive. So yeah, we are really a global village. And we have a comment by, by our special, one of the special guests for tonight, uh, uh, Michael McLuhan. Greetings all. So thank you, Michael. Michael for for watching and and I think uh, I think we are all um, we are all set um, mm -hmm. here we are okay Michael I'll call you in a little while you know I'll uh, we will have a special uh, um, uh, phone call with Michael McLuhan later tonight wow Wow, wow, wow. Genius, Messiah, welcome to Anonymous Global Village. All right, all right. Who else? Uh, Clinton. Uh, hello, Clinton. From uh, somewhere in Toronto or in Ontario. Great, Clinton. All right. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. Uh, and then uh, Masood and many others. So, uh, oh, 
Bob Logan, hello Paolo and all my friends, hello Bob, uh, David Nosbacken, I'm here, David, great, great. And, and again, uh, actually uh, Bob, David and many others will join us in the following weeks for this special uh, uh, series, Monday Night Webinars uh, series. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Masood is from Oakville, Ontario. I'm excited to see what's going on in this webinar. We too, actually, and we don't know, actually, what's going on. We will see in the meantime. Okay, 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 okay. So I, um, I will be in this multitasking mode during this webinar. Uh, multitasking mode, that means uh, I will check in the comments. I will, uh, you can even reach me out via email, uh, via messenger, on the, via comments. So I'll try to uh, keep an eye on your comments. This is very important to us because with your comments, uh, we will be able to interact and engage with each other. Right? And so, please uh, feel free to step in and share uh, uh, your uh, your comments, or just to say hi. Uh, I see Adina. Hi, everyone from Facebook, from uh, from YouTube. Adina Karasik and Adina will be with us uh, in a few weeks for a special Monday night uh, webinar on uh, poetry and art. And uh, who else? Uh, Mateus Barbosa. Here we are. Hello, hello, hello. Great. Great to see you. Great to see you. Okay, so keep saying hi, keep saying uh, your greetings so we can uh, warming up. It's 8 or 8 in Toronto, and uh, you will also see, um, yes, there is a, a, a special kind of backstage mode, right? So you can have a double uh, uh, look at what's happening and many other, many other uh, guests are coming, as you know. Okay, uh, eight or nine, I think it's time to uh, start. I, feel, I see many other, many other friends coming. And be reminded before leaving a comment during the live stream, please make sure to grant StreamYard permission to see your name at streamyard.com slash Facebook, okay? Because we are streaming on a private uh, Marshall McLuhan uh, Facebook group, right? Because it's a private group. In order to stream your comments, you have to uh, authorize the streamyard.com uh, app to... Um, technically put your name on uh, on it otherwise uh, i will uh, just uh, see something like this facebook user uh, hello okay it's better if we see who you are okay 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 well all right and from berlin uh, hello it's 2 a.m in berlin so it's completely wow thank you i'm so impressed so thank you very much greetings from berlin germany uh sorry for mispronouncing Ab abdul mosein abdul mosein great great and the other friends uh, uh, steve x uh, hello from sadbury and then uh, Kirsten, Mary, hello everyone, hello, hello, hello. All right, so time to um, time to finally uh, get started. I will uh, uh, put this comment. I don't know how to. I'm still familiarized with our uh, platform. Okay, 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 okay. All right, well, Monday night webinars. And so, uh, 8 11 p.m. Uh, uh, Toronto. Welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to the first Monday night webinar. Uh, Pandemedia, Pandemedia and folklores from the lockdown. So this is going to be the subtitle, the topic for the whole series to explore who we are in this lockdown age, who we are in this very crucial moment. So we are live on Facebook, we are live on uh, YouTube, and we are still alive. So this is important. We are uh, really getting together for 
um, this series of webinars. So thank you, thank you all for 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 being with us. In the meantime, um, hello to Brian, Mateus, uh, and many others who joined us uh, just uh, a few seconds ago. All right, lockdown. Lockdown. I'm gonna have a little bit of housekeeping, okay, Bef before um, presenting our uh, special guest for today. Lockdown, uh, to some extent, to me, uh, it means slowdown, okay? I will not gonna rush over these two hours during this Monday night webinars. I don't want to rush. I want to take it easy, right? We are in a slowdown modality, I think. I think it's important to reflect on the sense of time passing. So I won't rush, okay? I tend to rush every day. I used to rush before the lockdown, but this is the moment for slowing down, I think. So this is the approach I'm going to take for the Monday night webinar. So slowing down, enjoy. We're going to spend a couple of hours today uh, together. And uh, a couple of hours, uh, two hours is a lot of time. So um, again, it's a way to get uh, together, to get in together and share some time. And also, uh, this is not just a webinar. It's not just a another uh, live stream uh, on Facebook or YouTube online. I think it's a way to uh, foster a sense of community. It's a community uh, making uh, exercise. It's a community building exercise. Um, you know, I really miss the community, the Marshall McLuhan's community uh, in Toronto and all across the world. I miss the media ecology community. That's why I wanted to start uh, this uh, series of Monday Night Webinars uh, to get together and again uh, gather as a community. Community makes us uh, really uh, alive, really able to uh, explore how to make sense of this uh, a very crucial moment of this um, state of uh, uh, ongoing emergency, okay? So I consider you all part of this community. The Marshall McLuhan Facebook group uh, is our community. And thanks uh, to the, um, the McLuhan Institute and Andrew McLuhan, we also are uh, uh, stepping out of the Facebook uh, group uh, into the YouTube uh, channel and world. So basically, we are streaming beyond our uh, uh, boundaries in the Facebook group. However, again, we are a community. That's why I wanted to start uh, the uh, Monday Night web Webinars, to foster this uh, sense of belonging, to foster this uh, sense of uh, sharing and, and, and dialogue and, and foster conversations and foster what makes us uh, humans in this special, special moment. Uh, as you know, uh, I'm gonna have a. Uh, I have already a lineup of speakers uh, and guests and friends for the upcoming uh, uh, weeks. So just to name a few, just to name a few, we have for the next Monday night same Monday night webinars. We have Luigi Ferrara, Adam Loader, David Nostebacken, B.W. Pau, Ria Bermont, Alessandro Colombi from Italy, Adina Karasik, Ramona Pringle, Matthew. Ingram, Lance Strait, Mike uh, uh, Plug, uh, Bob Logan, Kathy Adams, Laura Trillo Lilian, Richard Grusin, Junichi Miyazawa from, from Japan, Andrew Mir, Phil Rose, Corey Anton, Tom Cooper, Jean Francois Vallet, Jacqueline, Jacques McClear Rogers, Donna Harper, Becky Va Barry Vacker, and many others will, um, will join us. So we have um, a tremendous lineup of guests for the upcoming, uh, uh, for the coming weeks. And so um, again, this is a, a proof, an actual proof that we are a community, friends, and so. And I like to also to make a sort of call to participation. So if you want to step in, if you want to be uh, part of these uh, Monday night webinars, uh, um, just drop me an email, uh, contact me, okay? So you can reach me out. And so uh, we'll, uh, I'll find a way to, uh, to let you step in, and even tonight, okay? So technically, I can send you a, a special magic link and 
well, if some of you impromptu wants to join us, uh, just uh, contact me. Just please uh, reach me out on uh, Messenger, email, or whatever. I'll try to I'll try to accommodate you. Okay. So again, this is an open community. Uh, it's a moment of. Uh, um, it's a moment to foster a very respectful, holistic, uh, and frank conversations. We want to seriously explore some playful uh, uh, topics or probably play with some serious topics, okay? So we want to play uh, with uh, with ideas and uh, and so you are you are important to us you are uh, your participation is important and so before presenting our special guests for uh, today let me just say hi to a new some new friends genius messia uh, jean francois Vallet and adam adam loader so many friends thank you thank you for coming it's absolutely great to see you. And I see also on uh, on Facebook many other comments. And so I think we are all set and getting ready for presenting finally uh, our special guests for tonight. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. So uh, I thought this is going to be informal, relaxed. I told you, lockdown, slow down, okay? I wanted to slow down, I wanted to make it informal, friendly, and meaningful, okay? Meaningful because of our uh, friendship. And in fact, uh, the first uh, special guest for tonight, uh, it's, well, I think uh, I want to really express my gratitude for, uh, for her from the University of Bologna. It's uh, 2 a.m. in Bologna, so you know it's the time zone. We are in a global village, but the time zone is still there. So 2 a.m. in Bologna, from the University of Bologna, one of, um, one of my special friends, uh, uh, the person that uh, really inspired my uh, conversation and explorations into the Marshall McLuhan's world. So I'm going to... Uh, the call here in the conversation, ladies and gentlemen, Elena Lamberti. Hello, Elena. Can you hear me? Oh, ciao. Ciao. Okay. I can we can keep uh, talking in ciao. Italian, <laughs> se preferisci. <laughs> uh. Given the time, uh, I wouldn't mind actually. <laughs> so thank you, Elena. Thank you very much. So it's, uh, I, I, I think you were going to wear your best uh, pajama. Uh, uh, well, actually, fifty yeah. percent pajama, fifty percent uh, dressing like a lady. Yeah, me too. Me too. I have a <laughs> <laughs> pajama on the bar. Right. What's going on, Hello, Helena? Thank you again for uh, for joining us. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for the idea. Thank you, everybody. A big ciao to all those who are connected from all around the world. Actually, that's great. And uh, what's going on? I think it's the same then. Is going on anywhere actually we are indoor we are trying to find the new ways to be together to preserve our identity as individuals and as communities wherever we are so i think this idea of the webinar is great it's uh, it's a great way as you say to to feel that we are together uh to feel uh, that uh, you know nothing can stop us but definitely something might change us is changing us actually so uh and uh and thank you paulo for having this idea thank you the other guests for joining uh, the situation thank you for making this very informal actually uh which means uh feeling like being at home we are at home but we are together in, in a bigger home in fact yeah yeah it's nice to get together so we are at home alone but together so thank you for Always. pointing that out, this out and great so thank you elena i'm going to so let's go back to to uh ontario somewhere from north of ontario uh the mind uh, uh, behind uh, the McLuhan galaxy which is a galaxy a repository for uh, everything all about McLuhan, the mind behind the McLuhan Galaxy blog. So I'm going to uh, uh, introduce you all, uh, Alex. Uh, how are you, Alex? Hey. 
Good evening, world. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Global Ale. Village. Welcome into the Global Village. Welcome into the uh, Monday night webinar. So what's going on, Alex? How are you, first of all? How are you? Good, good. I miss Toronto. Uh, I'm 110 kilometers northwest of Toronto in a small town called Fergus. Uh, but I'm not unhappy to be here at this time. Fewer people. <laughs> hmm. So I don't have to uh, worry about crowds much. Okay. So, no, thank you, Alex. Uh, and, well, we will uh, explore more about even what's going on in the McLuhan's community, the, the blog, the McLuhan's Galaxy blog. So, and I see uh, Masood uh, say, hi, Alex. Uh, uh hello, hello hello and let me step back one second so thank you alex i'm going to uh elena i wanted to show you a few bonjour elena thank you for staying so late in fact uh hello hello uh we have already a a, a question uh ciao elena andrew uh Adina, Adina, hello, beautiful <laughs> Elena. Thank uh, you. <laughs> another Elena, Elena Ferranti. Hi, Paolo, thanks oh. for organizing. And thanks to Elena for seeing up. So uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's absolutely uh, amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I want well, to... It's, it's, maybe it's not late, maybe it's early. Maybe it's my breakfast time. So that's it depends on how you look at things, actually. Of course, you just stolen my words. So Elena, you are ahead. <laughs> Six hours ahead, <laughs> at least, right? <laughs> ahead of time. At the speed of light. <laughs> Leader at the speed of light. All right. So, 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 so. All right. And let me uh, step back here this way for uh, the last guest for now. Then we have a, another surprise later after 8.30 and then a special call with Michael McLuhan. I told you already. Uh, but I'm very, very proud to have uh, to introduce you all to present our next uh, special guest for uh, tonight. Uh, I mentioned already the uh, McLuhan Institute. And so thank you very much to Andrew. Here you are, Andrew. Hello. Hey, Paolo. Hello, Hello world. world. Where are you? Where are you, Andrew? Don't panic. It's coming. I am in, uh, let me get some light here. I am in uh, Prince Edward County. Prince Edward County in um, Eric McLuhan's uh, library. Yeah, we have a we had a little bit of noise in the um, connection. I heard Picton, the Mar the Eric McLuhan's uh, library. You call it scriptorium, right? The scriptorium. Uh, otherwise known as the TMI headquarters, the headquarters of the McLuhan Institute. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, and you know what, Andrew? I think that uh, uh, we test already that uh, if we, if you can turn off the camera, I think uh, the audio is gonna be smoothly, and yeah. so we can keep uh, keep even better going. So, uh, Andrew, how how do you feel? How are you feeling in this uh, right. uh, strange, unique uh, situation for all of us? How, how how are you feeling right now? Uh, I've been. And keep being very, very busy. Oh. All right, all right. So uh, we are experimenting. And, and by the way, in Picton, uh, probably the uh, connection is not good enough for the live stream or well, we have a plane B, we have a backup plane. So in one second, I'm going to uh, call. 
Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Paolo. All right, you are live in the old media, the 20th century technology, <laughs> which is still working even better than the 21st technology. So let's keep um, uh, chatting uh, uh, a little bit this way, so uh, so the audio is more smooth. So my my question, you know, sometimes you go, we ask, uh, how are you? But my question is, how are you feeling right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, living in a in a rural community between farms, it's uh, the internet can be spotty. Uh, I was saying I'm feeling really good um, in spite of everything. Uh, my upholstery business has stopped, but I've become a stay-at-home dad and a kindergarten teacher, um, and those have been wonderful blessings. Uh, and we've taken the opportunity to move, uh, to pack up our house and to renovate my parents' old place. And so now I'm living here um, and I get to spend uh, more time in, in Eric's library, in the scriptorium, as we call it. Um, so it's kind of a, a dream come true, really. Hmm. But, uh, it, you know, uh, besides that, it's also, you know, my heart hurts because uh, people are dying um, people's lives are turned upside down. I think people are feeling uh, very anxious and not everybody is uh, fortunate to live in a place where they feel secure and comfortable um, and have access to help and to food and to, uh, to all these things. So, um, you know, I think I'm feeling a lot. <laughs> Yes, yeah, we are it's, uh, simultaneously uh, overwhelming of many, 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 uh, yeah, many kind of feelings, many new emotions, new, new setting up. Great. And are you still working? Of course, you're taking advantage of this uh, time at home for the uh, for your dad's uh, library, uh, Eric uh, McLuhan's uh, uh, personal library. Uh, I I think you are you are. Uh, in a um, face of uh, putting together all um, his books uh, as a special uh, repository, I think. Uh, what's what's uh, what are you doing with your uh, your dad's uh, library? Yeah, um, ten years ago, uh, I undertook the inventory of Marshall McLuhan's library, as you know, and now I'm doing the same thing uh, for my father's library. Hmm. Uh, it's coming up to um, two years since he died. Uh, and I'm slowly but surely making my way through um, this wonderful library of about 6,000 books. It's around the same size of Marshall's library. Wow. And I'm going through and uh, I'm documenting all the bibliographic data, but I'm also paying particular attention to um, the annotation. Um, and as in Marshall's library, uh, it's the annotation which records... Um, the reader, in this case, Eric McLuhan's uh, interaction uh, with the authors in their books. And um, it's really a fascinating uh, window into somebody's mind and their, their process, oh. um, which you can follow You can follow along on uh, the McLuhan Institute uh, YouTube page where um, I upload uh, a new video 15 minutes or so every week as I'm in the library. Great, great. It would be great uh, maybe in a few weeks. Uh, so the Monday night webinars uh, will keep going till uh, July, uh, till July 20, uh, 21st, which is Marshall McLuhan's uh, birthday. And by the way, Ellen Allen's birthday's birthday, if I don't mind. <laughs> so basically, Jan uh, July the 21st will be the final uh, Monday night webinar. So um, it would be great that in uh, in a few weeks uh, uh, we can connect again uh, so you can tell us more about uh, uh, your work during those uh, months. Okay. That would be great. All right. So, if you don't mind, Andrew, I'll keep uh, I'll keep you on the line, right? So sure. you can you can uh, keep uh, you can keep uh, um, following the discussion. And so, I'll uh, thank you, Eric. Uh, thank uh, thank you, Andrew, again for uh, for being with us. And and uh, let me just okay, stay stay on the line, all right? Stay on the line and let me just spend a few words. Uh, 
because we have our uh, next guest actually on air and hopefully everything will work smoothly i see on the on the here on the background so ladies and gentlemen from uh, new york uh, we have Paul Levinson. Paul Levinson. Paul, can you hear me? I hear you fine. All right. Great, great. great. How are you? How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. And as a matter of fact, if I sound a little breathless, it's because I was just up in Canada, like about 20 seconds ago, doing a podcast called Mediacy. So I was up in Canada. I dashed back uh, to my house uh, here in Westchester, New York. And now I'm up uh, back in Canada again with you. So it's been back an exciting in Toronto. Day. Yeah. And so welcome back. Uh, welcome back to Toronto, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Paul uh, is a friend. Is a, you know, this is a community of people who we know each other. Paul is a professor in uh, communication studies uh, at Fordham University. And uh, he, he is a pioneer in the media ecology uh, field of study uh, is a pioneer on the tetrad, the, the Marshall McLuhan's laws of media back in this 1974, 75. I think you organized the very first, Paul Levinson organized the very first uh, uh, international conference on the Marshall McLuhan's laws of media, the tetrad. And so, well, thank you for being with us and thank you for keep uh, working on that uh, very important legacy, Paul. Well, it's my pleasure. By the way, I did it a few years later, more like 77, 78. 77. But, yeah, but yeah. close enough. Close enough, close enough. Great, Paul. Um, all right, so it's 8.33 in uh, Toronto, but it's 2.33 a.m. in Italy, from uh, uh, in Italy, where our our special guest, uh, Elena, is. So, Elena, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll give you the room for a little while. So, I wanted to, um, first of all, uh, I've been asking uh, our um, special guests for this uh, Monday Night webinars, and I will do the same even for the following uh, weeks. I've been asking a few, a few things to share and bring uh, uh, to the community for this Monday night webinar. So I've been asking, uh, uh, of course, that was obvious, uh, uh, McLuhan's probe, a probe uh, relevant to make sense of this current uh, uh, pandemia, this current uh, lockdown age. So I've been asking uh, Elena, um, to bring uh, a probe. Then I've uh, uh, been asking all the guests, not only Elena, but I've been asking to find a special probe, an object, a special item, a symbolical item to represent, to reflect uh, uh, what's going on and to reflect uh, our feelings. Uh, again, so each guest will show in a little while a special uh, uh, object that uh, um, to get inspired, to inspire our conversation. And then also I was going to even foster um, some... Uh, Tetrad uh, thinking, tetratic, tetratic thinking. So it's uh, uh, it's nice that we can apply the the tetrad to um, everything, to any to any uh, human artifact, human invention, human innovation, to uh, everything. Uh, I know, for instance, uh, Andrew uh, did uh, a marvelous uh, um, piece on on uh, Medium uh, on his blog about uh, two tetrads. The Andrew McLuhan uh, did the tetrad, the tetrad, the the COVID nineteen. So what does COVID-19 uh, enhance, uh, uh, obsolesce, uh, reverse, uh, and um, obsol um, reverse, and what did I miss? Uh, um, and retrieve, and, uh, and also the social distancing. Okay, so Elena, uh, first of all, uh, what's, oh no, you have your probe here. Your probe is the following, on a spaceship, Earth, there are no passengers, only crew. Yeah, in fact, I, ha I saw that someone was already suggesting these uh, as a theme for discussion earlier in, uh, in the evening. 
Uh, yes, I, I, I went for this one. There are so many probes we could use for, uh, you know, this situation. But I like this one for two reasons, actually. First of all, uh, it invites us all to act together to find uh, ways out and new ways to be together. But at the same time, it also poses the problem of leadership because, of course, uh, sometimes it's nice uh, to be a passenger, so to be taken, right? Uh, in this case, actually, no, only crew. And uh, the problem of leadership in these days is a big problem. At least I feel it is a big problem in Italy, in the U.S. <laughs> Maybe not so much in Canada, I don't know. But it's, uh, it's uh, a very interesting probe because on the one hand, of course, it encourages us to come together as a community, to take responsibility, to share ideas and to find uh, solutions, to think out of the box uh, and find uh, new ways to navigate through a very new situation which might become a regular one. This is what experts are telling us, right? This is a situation that might keep uh, repeating in the future. But on the other hand, it's also the problem of leadership. Those who are actually in the position today to control the situation, or at least uh, those who are in the position to tell us what to do and what not to do, uh, are they up to the role? Because uh, one of the things that really is worrying me is the lack of uh, vision <laughs> Uh, and in international lack of vision, uh, you know, who's, who's giving instructions to whom and why. So these are two reasons why I, I chose uh, this, uh, uh, this probe. All right. So thank you, Elena. And, and, and of course, now I'm curious to, to know more about uh, your uh, special uh, probe, your... Uh, your Mythic yeah, object, the, the so. item, the symbolic <laughs> yeah. item for making sense of. Uh, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's. I don't know if it is mythical. Maybe it was mythical. Now it's quite common as well. And the object uh, is, uh, you know, has a name, but can have many interpretations actually. And I have many interpretations of the object. The object I have chosen, and it's quite banal, but maybe not so banal, is a mask. Because these days, of course, the mask has become part of our uh, identity, actually. And uh, But the problem is, the moment I decided to uh, opt for a mask as an object, uh, a symbolic object for this situation, then I had to decide which mask. Because, of course, uh, now we are forced to use this mask, right? So we see this mask. But when the coronavirus... Uh, became uh, uh, our reality in, in Italy. We were not wearing these masks. We were wearing these masks, right? Because everything started in February, which is when we celebrated the carnival. And we started to understand that the coronavirus was a serious thing the moment when they stopped the biggest celebration for the carnival in Venice, the big festivity. So everything was... Uh, forbidden so we could not people could not celebrate carnival anywhere which means we could not go out we could go not not not, not be in the square together so we have forced it to, you know from from these to these and from dust to down and this is when actually uh, we had to think about uh, you know ourselves uh, as a community and as individuals in in different ways and it's interesting because, uh, you know, it's exactly the opposite. If you think of these, uh, the mask we are forced to wear now is something that covers the mouth and the nose, which are, you know, our sources of air, the way we breathe. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a screen between us and, and what we need to live. Uh, but we can see, so we can use the sight. Whereas before, with this type of mask, it was exactly the opposite, right? So we could breathe quite uh, beautifully, but you know, we, uh, we we were hiding our eyes. We were hiding part of what makes us different. So I think it's symbolic because it, you know, these two masks symbolizes two different moments and. Last but not least, the thinking of the mask made me think of uh, when actually the masks were used uh, in the past and when and why. And apart from the carnival and apart from, you know, 
the Commedia dell'arte and all what you normally associate to a mask, uh, there was a moment when actually the mask became a part of, uh, of a sad reality because there is a mask which is called uh, the mask of the doctor of the plug, which is, I, it's a mask, luckily I don't have. It's a mask that uh, is very special because it was uh, uh, for the doctors uh, treating the patients with the plug. And it has a very long neck, which uh, was meant to provide a distance from the doctor to the patient. So to be away and uh, to be exactly that's it Paolo beautiful so this is the mask this is the doctor this is the mask that the doctor was supposed to wear it looks like a strange bird so a kind of alien you can't see his face and it covers both nose and mouth which is of course the combination of the two but it also gives you a distance which is not a social distance but it's a security distance uh, uh, so uh, uh, so much so that the doctor, you know, would not touch the, the patient, would not get infected. So the object I have for us is the mask, but what type of mask? Well, you know, I like to decide. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, you know, either or it's a mask that uh, it's an object that makes us uh, think about uh, the image we project on others and the identity we either show or hide and the, uh, you know, uh, the perceptive organs we use to, uh, you know, plug in or out with the, with the environment and therefore hmm. with the others. Thank you, Elena. I, I'd like to share Matthew's uh, comment. Interesting, masks also works as filters. Now more than ever, we must filter our words to not spread misinformation so filters uh, yeah is another is another definition for masks so even for filtering our identity right it's to some extent uh, uh, it's a filter for uh, the way we project ourselves uh, uh, outside and uh, there are a few other comments i'm going to pick later some comments so um, again so please folks uh, keep commenting keep sending your comments and then uh, I will uh, screen some of them. So thank you, Mateus. And, and uh, well, um, I'm going to uh, have a, a, a merry-go-round for the special objects. So thank you, Elena, for and then I'll be back to you with uh, the tetrad. Right? I think uh, we can uh, uh, keep tetrading uh, uh, the COVID-19 or social distancing or any other uh, medium uh, in this way. So, uh, Andrew, are you still there, right? All right, thank you. Can you can you please um, uh, tell us more about uh, your uh, so the work you did with the 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 COVID nineteen tetra? What's your uh, uh, um, insights and outcomes for uh, from tetra being uh, the the uh, COVID nineteen or social distancing? So using the tetra to make sense and to critical think uh, about. Um, this brand new scenario? Sure. Well, um, it's interesting because um, COVID-19 is not a uh, human, right? It's, it's a, a virus. And so the McLuhan's, Marshall and Eric, are very explicit when they talk about the Tetra that it's only useful in the extensions of man, as they call them, uh, in human artifacts. However, um, though it, it may or may not really be of human origin, it's had the effect on humanity that a human technology would in creating and enforcing this environment uh, and this reaction from us. So because of that, um, we can analyze it um, as a tetrad and see uh, what the effects are. And I, I, as you said, I did a couple of tetrads on it, and this was back... Um, a month ago, uh, more than a month ago, a month and a half ago, um, early in, in March, when I, I was asked to write a piece about it. And I, I took a look at what might be some of the effects of social distancing. Um, and I don't think we can actually talk too much about this because um, 
the the ripples from social distancing are going to continue to grow for I think some years. But uh, on my tetrad, I have it enhances. Uh, and keep in mind, this was six weeks ago. It enhances self sufficiency, uh, hypochondria, uh, embodiment or bodily awareness, uh, and play while reducing uh, health risks. Um, on the reverse, so when you when you push self distancing to an extreme, you end up with paranoia, with suspicion and fear, with severe isolation. Uh, for the retrieval, I've I've thought that it retrieves a Victorian etiquette or sensibility, very very strict social protocols, um, the frontier type of caution, uh, the dark ages, um, and I found that it obsolesces or or takes over from proximity and contact, uh, from excessive uh, hand uh, washing. Uh, and antisocial behavior. Uh, another another effect of, of this, which uh, I've been thinking a lot about, is that um, something so simple as a handshake um, is now gone. Uh, and this kind of social closeness and these social cues, uh, and I think body language is is going to change as much as uh, our our verbal languages. Uh, will and I think that's um, something uh, worth paying attention to uh, very much. And as, as a parting shot, there I'd, I'd say, Paul, uh, seventy-seven, seventy-eight. I think it's time for another Tetrad conference because not only did Paul organize a Tetrad conference, he organized the only Tetrad conference conference on laws and media that's ever been held. So I think we're we're due another. Hmm. No, thank well, you for pointing Paul. this out. And by the way, Paul, uh, yeah. you may see on the screen, we take for granted about what is a tetrad, but the genius Messia is asking, tetrad, what is this? What is it? So I'll give you the room. Uh, you can even uh, uh, help uh, uh, genius Messia to, to know what is the tetrad. Well, sure. Let's let's just start with something that's not too controversial, which was always and still is one of my favorite ways of uh, uh, explaining the tetrad. Uh, let's take radio, for example. So, in this four part, what I would actually call an app today. I mean, the tetrad is an app. McLuhan wasn't using those that term in the 1970s, but he, he did say the tetrad was a tool and it's a mode of inquiry to help us understand the relationship of a given technology to other technologies and to the impact, to the effects that they all have, have had, and will likely have on, on human life. So if we start with radio, First part of the tetrad, what does it amplify or enhance? So that's easy. It, what does radio amplify or enhance? It literally amplifies human sound, the human voice. It could be music. Uh, and it not only amplifies uh, that, it actually sends it across great distances instantly. So it makes sound a mass medium, not just someone standing on a street corner and shouting, but you're talking to a microphone and people can hear it all across the country and eventually all across the world. So th that's the first part of the Tetrad. Uh, Marshall McLuhan, though, got more provocative and interesting as he went through the four parts of this app. Uh, the second part is something that looks at what this medium, radio, pushes out of prominence that had formerly been amplified or in first place. And with radio, I mean, that's pretty easy to see also. Radio, the acoustic, obsolesces the visual. And so if you just want to take one example, one of the things radio does is it delivers the news. That's true even today. It was certainly true in the 1920s when radio first became a mass medium. When radio does that, to some extent, it pushes newspapers out of that first 
prominent primary position. So radio obsolesces reading, it obsolesces photography, it obsolesces everything that are denizens of the visual world, everything that is dependent upon the eye, because radio is uh, pushing into prominence the ear. But there's a third part to this four-part tetrad. Uh, Marshall McLuhan suggested we should also think about what this given technology pulls back into prominence, something which was once prominent, but some other medium came along and obsolesced it. So what does radio pull back into prominence? Well, again, the acoustic. Not the acoustic worldwide, uh, not the acoustic amplified and that it's incredibly loud, but just the simple acoustic of human speech, of music played with acoustic instruments, of singing, of, to use our news example, of the town crier, of the Roman herald. These were all ways of presenting information acoustically, uh, and they were all to some degree obsolesced by the eye, by writing, by the visual component of, of the human uh, communication dimension. So radio retrieves the acoustic. Last and certainly not least, the fourth part of the tetrad I think is the most interesting and exciting because Marshall McLuhan suggested that when a, when a, a technology when a, a medium is pushed to its limit, it changes into something else and not only changes into something else, but in that change uh, almost seems to reverse back to an earlier technology, although it's not by any means an earlier technology. So when you push radio to its limits, radio, this enormously successful medium in the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s, suddenly, Radio becomes television. It has a lot of the properties of radio. It is instant. It's mass. It has sound. But it also has an image. And therefore, once again, the eye, which had been pushed out of prominence by radio, is brought back into prominence with television. We don't listen to television unless we're in another room. We look at television. And television looks at us. One of the things Marshall was fond of saying is the CBSI looks at you. And that's very true. You know, that's a play on Nietzsche's idea that when you look into the abyss, you find the abyss looking at you. So, and then you can do a tetrad on television, right? So, and, and it just keeps continuing. And so you can easily apply this to the pandemic. Yeah, uh, thank you for Paul for, for, uh, Paul, for uh, pointing this out. And uh, um, again, I, I like to take your suggestion and amplify my voice uh, uh, using the phone because I think it's now time to. Uh, I'll, I'll try to, uh, uh, Andrew. I'll try to keep you on hold while calling your uncle. Michael, so again, uh, 20th century technology. Let's see if it does work. Oh, it may, it may work. This is Michael McLuhan. Hello. Hello, Michael. It's Paolo. Yeah, Paolo hello. speaking. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm with you. Online, you know, we are live on Facebook and YouTube in the Marshall McLuhan's community where people from uh, from uh, uh, all across the world, from Italy, for example, now we're going to make a surprise, and then uh, from Brazil, uh, from many other countries. So, by the way, so let me say hi to, uh, again, no, again, to, to Bernadette, uh, uh, Alfonso, and Masood, and many others who joined us. So, how are you? First of all, where are you, Michael? Where are you? Oh, I'm sitting uh, in front of my computer monitor in my lovely home, uh, three and a half hours north of Toronto on the shores of Georgian Bay. Uh, it's a lovely place up here, although it's dark now. We had a wonderful day. Uh, my wife and I, of course, are uh, uh, social distancing. 
we were in isolation. She had come back from Australia, so we spent 14 days in quarantine. Hmm. And when we emerged, we came into a new world, the, the new world <laughs> that wasn't there when we first went into quarantine. And that is that all these stores were closed and, uh, you know, very few people on the streets. It was, it was very unusual. It sort of felt like a Canadian apocalypse. Very friendly and um, uh, very approachable, but uh, definitely a, a world change. Um, I, I wanted to send special greetings to Elena because I'm, I'm sure she'll just drop dead and, and go to sleep. And here she is. There. Here she is, Elena. And it, it is wonderful, Elena, to uh, have you here all the way from Italy. It's just great. And Paul, that was a great piece you just did on the Tetrad. Uh, I enjoyed that very much. I wanted to add a bit in um, uh, observations about the mask. Um, it's interesting that where we live, uh, is a very different um, environment from uh, Toronto with its great multicultural diversity. But uh, we live in an area where uh, we are literally uh, located between uh, two uh, Indian reserves, two uh, First Nations reserves, sorry. And um, this is an oral culture, and uh, they have always had an oral culture, and it's a vibrant, alive culture. So it's it's been very interesting um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, interrelating to people that are First Nations that rely so much on on uh, stories as a means of teaching and communicating. And these things are very much alive for them in a way that literate uh, people who mostly get their information from print cannot understand how alive oral culture and these stories are and how meaningful they are. That's very important. And to Elena's uh, uh, offering on masks, I just wanted to add that uh, what I noticed with that is so much of what we uh, uh, communicate is done by looking at somebody's lips, especially if you're getting older and you're getting a little hard of hearing, you find yourself staring at people's lips uh, to augment uh, what you are hearing and to understand what they're saying. And the mask covers this up. So I notice when I do encounter people, especially people that I don't know as well, like clerks in stores or what have you, that they don't know uh, if you're being humorous, they don't know if you're being serious, and everything uh, is devoid of a certain layer of emotive communication because our mouths are covered. So this is a very interesting thing um, that, again, you're not aware of until you have this covering happening. And unlike a mask, which covers the... Uh, the mask that you used, uh, Elena, covers the top part of the face, you can still see the eyes. You cannot see the lips. You cannot see uh, a smile when somebody's smiling in a mask. So I just wanted to leave that, Paolo. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that you're doing. Um, it's quite exciting to see this coming together of, of different minds. And I just wanted to add, I'm not paranoid. When I told you we couldn't do this visual link, uh, Andrew proved that to me. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it just crashes. You know? I see, I see, I see, I see. But this way so we are... That's all I have to offer right now. Uh, I mean, we are experimenting. It is nice. Uh, you know, how meaningful is your voice right now, right? We can't uh, see you. But how meaningful is your voice? Uh, so you are uh, really uh, sparkling our imagination because we can imagine where you are at home. Uh, and so uh, when something missing, we learn how to make sense of it. And I think uh, your uh, uh, oral participation uh, uh, tonight um, uh, proves that. I will give the room, uh, the floor to Elena in order to uh, comment or uh, give a response to to Michael. And so you say hi, you can say hi to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. No, I actually, uh, yeah, I, I agree with what. Buongiorno. Said buongiorno. Buonanotte. Uh, but 2 a.m. technically, almost, no, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> in Italy. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's a uh, yeah. No, I, I'm curious about uh, what you said uh, uh, um, about the two native communities actually, because uh, this is a situation we don't have, of course, in uh, in Europe or in Italy. So we don't have that type of uh, cohabiting, right, of different cultures together. So uh, how is the situation in those areas uh, regarding the the COVID and this uh, pandemia? Uh, People actually are healed, people are recovering, people are in, in, not touched the, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, from the earth point of view. Just in curious. our area, um, it has not been that bad, the, uh, the amount of uh, COVID that we've had here. Um, and uh, I, I am not aware, because we are socially isolated, of the impact it's having. Uh, yeah, in the community, but I know in the United States, um, the Navajo uh, have been hit particularly hard. So uh, again, especially in countries where there is not the social infrastructure, the uncivilized countries like the United States, uh, where there isn't the uh, the backup in social programming to care for their citizens, um, it will hit the poor the hardest. And especially those who culturally uh, we'll have multi-families, uh, multiple families in the same dwelling. As we do here in Canada, in the north particularly, you can have four families in a, in, in a, a house that is built for one. So, uh, you know, again, it's a different way in which they live. And, um, y you know, these things are extremely deadly. But, uh, again, I think the social distancing that... Uh, the care that's been taken uh, in Canada with our government has uh, minimized that impact, uh, I hope. I, I know New Zealand's doing super well, and we can only uh, hope to get there. Um, but uh, it's certainly not as bad as being in a country where the leader is suggesting we ingest uh, uh, bleach and uh, uh, other disinfectants. So. <laughs> We're better off than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but New Zealand they have a great leader actually, and this uh, you know takes us back to the, the idea of leadership as well, because that woman is doing amazing things at least from my perspective. I see there are questions about the masks from uh, Jean Francois and uh, Jean Francois. Jean Francois, have, uh, Jean -Francois yeah. I, Give an explanation for why you wear masks. I don't have an answer for that because I'm not an expert in, in uh, you know, Asian cultures, but we have people from Asia uh, I see connected that might help us to understand that. Actually, wearing masks was quite, quite, quite common here, actually. Masks were part of uh, rituals, not, not, uh, not in present days, actually, but the mask was not so far from our cultures, actually. It was associated to religion. Uh, issues or to carnival, to special moments in the life of people. So it was not so uh, so strange and so odd. And in fact, one of the biggest tradition, literary tradition in Italian, is based on the use of masks. Right, the Commedia dell'arte is a, is a series of masks that become individuals and and so on and so forth. But as far as the Asian cultures are concerned, Jean Francois, I'm not your person. I, I can't help you there and I apologize for that and there are I see there are many other questions here that yeah, would be, questions you know, are also nice also answer, a small uh, small uh, comments I recently uh, Bernadette Bernadette hello Bernadette how are you uh, recently attempted to get a money order from my rent check while wearing a scarf that covered the bottom half of my face and I felt like I was being looked at as if I was about to rob the place, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a um, it's a different um, uh, way of um, yeah communicating with others, right? To others. And the mask was also part of a very nice uh, European TV series, right? Uh, the Casa del Papel, right? The House of Paper. Uh, because, of oh, course, yeah. the robbers used uh, a mask, which was the mask of uh, the great uh, Spanish artist Dali. Dali. But in fact, it was a mask that complicates the way, you know, the, the good boys outside respond because you don't know who is behind the mask and you don't know if they are the bad guys or just the prisoners inside. So, uh, again, uh, 
to everybody. I see many questions and I'd love to actually answer some of these, but we behave and we have Paolo who is hosting, we have Alex yeah. with his probes and things. So it's not that we don't want to answer, but, you know, we are trying to, to follow Absolutely. the first path. Yeah. And by the way, we have plenty of time. It's still 9 uh, p.m. Ooh. here in Toronto. It's 3 a.m. in Italy and elsewhere, even in different time zones. And again, so our motto is lockdown is slow down. Okay, so we don't have to rush. We need time to digest uh, this brand new situation, right? So that's why we have a little bit of more time at home and we need to, I think, uh, benefit from uh, this uh, extra time we're spending home uh, to slow down uh, and reflect uh, on uh, the um, yeah how to make sense of this. So thank you again, Elena, for bringing this uh, mask uh, topic uh, on the table tonight. And I think uh, uh, we, we will have time to uh, keep going on this. And by the way, it's 3 uh, a.m. in the morning in Italy. Elena, I don't want to, I mean, uh, take advantage of your time. I know it's late. I don't want you to fall asleep live streaming. <laughs> oh, no. So uh, at this stage, uh, I, I will let you go sleep if you don't mind. I, 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 it's up to you. I, I don't want to. No, no, I can stay. I have, uh, I have no, a few sure. things to say later on. So no, no, I'm up. All right. Okay, you're up. Okay, great, great. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank, but thank you. you for the offer. <laughs> All right. And so, no, okay, um, we be back to Ontario. So Alex, uh, Alex, 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 uh, um, and Paul, I'll, I like to, okay, let me step, uh, let me step out a little bit. But uh, Alex and Paul, Alex, uh, first of all, uh, what's your uh, secret object? I mean, not secrets, your symbolic object. And by the way, Paul, did you bring uh, your, uh, you have it? Yeah. All okay. right. So uh, first Alex and then Paul uh, in, <laughs> uh, in a few words, uh, why did you choose the, that object? Why that object is meaningful to you? And uh, what that, uh, why is, uh, is important to you, Alex? Well, I, uh, I decided to uh, select my uh, laughing Buddha. Um, Never, never before have we needed uh, to laugh, and I, I rub his tummy every day for good luck. And we've also sort of positioned him at the front door um, for good luck and, and, and protection from the uh, COVID-19. Uh, so that's, that's what I picked. Paul, it's up to you. Paul, what's yeah, your object? Let me, uh, see if I can get this. There we go. That's like a small stapler. So why did I choose the stapler? Uh, because if you think about what a stapler does is it ties things together. And, and part of what the stapler also does, if you're using a stapler, is you can use the back of the stapler or, or maybe a specific uh, special thing to... Uh, take the staples out and to um, remove the sheets of paper. And if you think about what's going on right now as a result of the pandemic, it's both tragic, but there are also some very positive things about it. People on the one hand uh, are being separated. They're being pulled apart. They were formally together, professors and their students in in-person classes, grandparents and grandchildren who can't hug each other. Uh, and, and obviously those kinds of things are not as tragic as somebody getting sick and even worse, someone losing their life. But, but they're you know, very uh, unfortunate. But at the same time, if you think about what we're doing right now, we have ways with our online media of bringing people together, whether it's for a seminar like this, or you know the way my wife Tina and I interact with our two grandsons uh, is through Zoom, which is a process like this. Now it's not easy. One of our grandsons is four years old 
he's great. We can talk to him, have conversations with him. He knows who we are. We can't hug him, but it's still something. Our other grandson, though, is just about five months old. And, uh, you know, maybe he recognizes us to some extent on the screen, but he's not yet talking, uh, although he's certainly babbling. I think he said something about the Tetrad just yesterday. I'm not sure. But th the point is, one of the, and this gets back actually to what Andrew was talking about, one of the consequences, and we can fit this into the Tetrad for the pandemic, one of the effects of the pandemic is it's rearranging. It's, it, it's, it's pulling apart and putting together human relationships in a way that no one just a few months ago ever expected that it would happen. I, Paolo, you have to un, uh, unmute yourself. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Alex, there Alex, I was, uh, sorry. Alex, uh, your comment uh, and, uh, from your uh, smiling Buddha, a comment from the smiling Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'll give you my, uh, how, how about I give you my um, uh, uh, pro. Oh, yeah, the pro, the pro. The um, probe that I selected was the, that the media have substituted themselves for the older world. Here we are. And by the older world, of course, we mean the natural world. And uh, we first, McLuhan first uh, talks about this, I think, when uh, uh, the Sputnik went up, the Russian Sputnik satellite in 1957. And suddenly he visualized this when you when we could take pictures from uh, a satellite outside orbiting around the Earth and shooting back so we could see the Earth ourselves. He visualized that as a kind of proscenium, um, you know, the frame around uh, a stage. And um, and obviously the the substitution of media for the natural world that we're experiencing now is enforced. We, we have no, um, no choice. Uh, today, I was very upset when one, one of my favorite walking trails here in, in Fergus uh, along the Grand River uh, was closed by the Grand River Authority. And I didn't see that because people were keeping themselves, the, the, the trail was never very crowded but now we can't go on it at all. So we're forced to walk on the pavement in town. Hmm. Um, uh, but even before this, uh, the um, COVID-19, uh, people were already with the onset of, of smartphones and uh, these little things we carry around in our pockets already, uh, you would walk down the street and people would be walking towards you and bumping into you uh, they were staring more at their screens than they were at other people. So we talk about it in media ecology. We talk about there being two ecologies, uh, the ecology of, of uh, media, which uh, Neil Postman and, and Marshall McLuhan, I th actually, I think it was uh, Eric McLuhan who might have come up with that term. Um, but set against that is the natural world. So we have two, two ecologies that we have to try to balance together. And um, but now uh, we're disproportionately in, in a media world, even now, and uh, kids are taking distance learning, online learning like never before. Uh, online learning is no longer an option. Um, and all of the media are being redefined in, in one way or another. Hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. And by the way, I, I like to um, go back to the online learning. Firstly, because I know you have a, a long-standing experience in that, and I knew a little bird told me that Paul, uh, Paul, you were uh, back in the the eighties and the nineties, uh, a pioneer on this. So before going back to the e online learning, I wanted to uh, say say hi to again to Michael, so he can. Um, uh, uh, Michael, are you there? I am here. All right, so here. all right, so we can let we can let you go. Okay, so Michael, uh, a few a few uh, f remarks before uh, before you leave. 
Okay, so first of all, I won't be leaving watching. I am just leaving uh, uh, the, with call. the uh, audio just because uh, there are some hearing issues here. And um, also, it's uh, it's distracting to have the words on the screen at a different point from the words in the phone, <laughs> so from I... the audio in the phone. However, uh, I did want to say I think it's a fabulous thing you're doing, uh, Paolo. It's great. It's uh, really wonderful and very edifying to hear Paul and Elena and Alex and everybody all in the same room. And indeed, to be even uh, able to spy a bit on their home environments, it's a really wonderful thing. So it, it's a great initiative you have. I'm very happy to have been here for the inaugural. And uh, let me know if you need me back. Uh, and please, uh, keep going. Absolutely. So expect any any call any Monday night. Uh, who knows? Uh, if you... If you Give me warning, <laughs> so I make sure I'm around the phone. <laughs> For sure you will. All right. So now you know. And uh, so expect uh, uh, one day another call from me. And thank you again. Thank, thank you. you again, Michael. Everybody stay safe. Stay safe and stay sage, uh, particularly. Thank you, thank you again, Michael. Ciao, and I am sure the whole folks are saying hi and have a good night to Michael. Thank you, thank you again, uh, Michael. Um, and by the way, I have Andrew. Uh, Andrew, still there? Hello. I am still here. Yeah, all right, all right. Uh, thank you, thank you for uh, uh, holding. You are still there. So we were talking about uh, uh, online learning with Paul Levinson and Alex Koskis. So the idea that, uh, well, education in general and, and learning is deeply impacted by the current uh, um, scenario. We are experimenting. I think we were not ready. So we started doing online classes, online learning without the, the proper experience for, for facing uh, this. So uh, I was going to uh, check uh, your uh, the, the comments from, from Facebook and from YouTube. In the meantime, let me say hi to David Nosbacken. He said, bravo, Michael. And so, Michael, you have a hi from, from David. Uh, Bob saying, Alex, is right closing parks is counterproductive. Enjoying nature is a way to deal with the stress we are experiencing due to COVID. This is what that was Bob Logan. And then a few other comments from uh, from Facebook. But Andrew, uh, uh, your comment, you, you send me your probe. The medium is the message, which may sound uh, obvious and banal, but is not, right? So why did you, did you choose uh, the medium as the message, Andrew? You know, I chose the medium as the message because like you said, it, it might seem obvious and banal, but um, 62 years later, it's still teaching us uh, those five simple words. You know, um, it was uh, just coming up on, on exactly 62 years in, in mid-May 1958 uh, in Vancouver. Marshall first said the medium is the message. And he was talking to radio broadcasters about um, this new thing called television. Uh, and of course the radio people were very concerned about it and afraid that, um, their livelihoods would be over. Uh, and Marshall was trying to tell them that, um, television wouldn't end radio. It would change things. Hmm. Um, and, and so the medium is still very much the message because the messages change, uh, when the medium is the environment. Um, and the medium is the message is a call to us all to have a look at the effects at what's happening around us and not simply the content. Um, and this COVID situation is, is really driving that home because, um, you know, it's, it's happened so quickly and so totally that everybody is affected. Uh, and we can see how this, this virus, this small minuscule thing has caused quite an upset caused an environment which has forced us to lean and rely on technologies um, as we never have before. Um, it, as you say, with uh, education and with work, um, it's really forced us to um, test the promise of remote work. 
Uh, and as we can see from this broadcast, it's a little bit hit or miss because, um, you know, for myself, being a satellite-based internet with uh, everybody else in the neighborhood uh, using it more and more and more, um, I can only participate well by telephone. For people in cities with a good broadband connection, um, it's a different matter. But um, we've, we've had this ability to do teleconferencing and remote learning for a while now, but this has forced the issue. Um, and what I've heard back from people in education and in work, um, so many people in uh, knowledge learning, in uh, advertising, marketing, um, they're still able to perform their tasks uh, just as well and they've seen very little disruption in their business um, just to market changes. Um, in education, I did a, a guest lecture with a John McDade's class on Rhode Island uh, two nights ago. Um, and the the same thing, but I think there, the students uh, really wanted to hear me talk about what's happening now. Um, and I think people are, are really craving understanding our current situation. And that's how I come back again to the medium is the message, because when you understand that when Marshall says medium, he means environment, he means effect. It's an urge for us to understand how our environment is changing and how we are changing. Because make no mistake that this increase in screen time is going to have a very large effect on us, on our senses, on our nervous system, anxiety, uh, personal psychological problems. These things are, are going through the roof. And I'm seeing a lot of heartbreaking stories from friends of mine um, who are very alone and feel alone, even though they have the world at their fingertips and at their thumbs and at their eyeballs on the screen. So um, I think we neglect the effects at our peril in our rush to find technological solutions. Um, and it's it's worth considering. Yeah. Clever and absolutely right. That's why I wanted to... Uh, Put back uh, uh, Paul and Alex, uh, post-pandemic pedagogy, PPP, post-pandemic pedagogy. And I think, uh, uh, oh, by the way, let me, let me uh, bring in Elena as well. So, uh, post-pandemic pedagogy, your comment, uh, let's say from uh, top to bottom, Paul, you first. Well, first of all, as you mentioned earlier, we actually helped invent online education back in the 1980s. And the old saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, Tina and I had just become parents of our son, Simon, in 1983. And we both wanted to stay home and spend as much time as possible with him. So Tina just flat out quit her job. Uh, which was a good idea, uh, but we needed to have some money. I was a professor, but uh, I had just participated in an online not-for-credit course offered by a place called the Western Behavioral Sciences Institute. That was back in 1984. And so it dawned on me, hey, this is a good way that I can stay home with our new baby and teach classes at the same time. And that's how Connected Education or Connect Ed came about in the first place. And it's sort of interesting that now that same pattern is being repeated Tragically, not for such a wonderful reason as having a baby, but because of the havoc that the coronavirus is uh, <coughs> wreaking on us. Uh, I, and let me just say, uh, I agree with Andrew completely that we do have to be aware of the both positive results and perhaps some of the negative consequences that uh, any new technology engenders. But I do have to say that in a situation where the choice is being home with no outlet, meaning being at home and you can't work, being at home and you can't get any education, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we, we can't worry too much now about what negative consequences online education or online work might have. Instead, we should figure out ways to make it even more available, more easy. So I, you know, I was 
very interested in hearing that, you know, you, in some places, for example, where Andrew is in Canada, he can't even use this video component. So thank goodness there is still a telephone. But we should move as a world to get everyone in the world in a position where they can take part in online activities. And I think that that in itself will be a lasting good consequence of what's going on. So to get back to the Tetrad for a split second, what does the Tetrad reverse into? One of the things it will, I'm sorry, what does the coronavirus pandemic reverse into? One of the things that it surely will reverse into is a world in which we use online media more effectively than we did at the beginning and middle of 2019. And I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Elena. Yes, uh, 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 post-pandemic pedagogy, post. The post is what worries me most. Is there a post? Because so far it seems it's a forever thing, actually, because they're telling us that things won't go back to normal, whatever normal means, for way, way long. Oh, they're talking about the vaccine to come in a year, maybe more. So the post is uh, something that I would put on hold. Definitely, there is a pandemic pedagogy that is a different way to actually interplay as a, as a professor, as a teacher. And uh, in Bologna, things went quite well, actually. But we could uh, uh, see differences in uh, the ways schools, different orders of schools are organized. The university, Unibo, I'm very proud to say, responded quite well. But we must, uh, in, I, by that I mean that uh, in, in a week, 10 days, everything turned uh, into uh, uh, online pedagogy. So it was not a problem. The institution actually offered us means, uh, infrastructures, and it was pretty fast. It worked quite well. So. We didn't experience too many problems, a few, of course. But the point is that, uh, you know, uh, we had to adjust quickly to a new format. So we had prepared our classes for a different situation, of course, and we had to translate whatever we had thought for a different situation into something else because the platform implies a different use, of course, of your knowledge, your medium, etc. And uh, some people uh, complain that this might be a way to force us to be uh, uh, on e-learning forever, right? But that's not e-learning. What we are doing is not e-learning. It's just, you know, to adapt something, uh, thought for a format into a new one because of the circumstances. Uh, e-learning is a different process because you have to think ahead. Uh, <coughs> to organize your knowledge in a different way, your, your, your uh, things, examples, uh, case studies in a different way. Uh, what didn't work so well was uh, at a school level, elementary school or what we call scuola media. Not at all schools were, uh, you know, um, facing the problem in the same way because the infrastructures are not the same across uh, even in Bologna and you can imagine across the country so again there is a problem of leadership who decides what to do there is a kind of uh, independence uh, organization of, of schools which is good on the one hand but in these uh, circumstances it's not so good because you have different speeds and you have students who didn't miss a day you have students who are not going to school for you know who haven't gone to school for quite a few weeks now so uh, definitely if there is a post but in, in any case in the future the first thing to do is to make sure that everybody has the same access to the opportunities uh, across the country and across the world and that's that's an issue that of course uh, uh, makes us uh, think about uh, the way our Western and not only our global system is organized, the real access to infrastructures, the real, uh, you know, the, the, the same equal opportunity for everybody, and that's an issue too. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, I don't want to be pessimistic. I had a very good uh, experience in, uh, in adjusting to the new medium. Our students were amazing. 
uh, we could experience a kind of generation gap through the know-how, sharing the know-how in a different way. So we have students teaching us how to do a few tricks here and there, because in some cases they are, they are technologically advanced, more than I am, for sure. And uh, But at the same time, you had students, you know, plugging in a bit earlier than the class uh, time just to chat with you and to tell you how much they miss the, the fact to be in the same uh, in the same room. And I want to finish by uh, saying that it's the first time that my students uh, understood the meaning of outer, uh, you know, to be out of an environment, to be out of a certain situation because sometimes it's uh, it's different difficult for me to tell them that you know media are our environment and that it is difficult to be out of that when I was born the, the world was uh, organized in a different way there was you know a different ecology as uh, we were saying before uh, including a different ecology of education uh, now for the first time I have uh, students who tell me that they do understand what they mean what they uh, what what I mean by being outside of the media system uh, because for them to be you know uh, forced to the constant online interplay which is what they normally did even in class uh, now it's too much so they need sometimes actually to be able to just go out and walk and they can't do that without their you know uh, devices connected so each generation is learning something through the other and because of the situation. And this per se is a, a pedagogy which is forced upon us through this uh, pandemic uh, situation. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. And I see Bob Logan commenting, we are now living in a post-normal world and the pre-COVID normal will not return. So, Alex, you have been uh, actually uh, teaching uh, in a, a pre-COVID uh, e-learning uh, system, right? So you have yes. been uh, you have been teaching uh, e-learning at Gonzaga University uh, for a long while uh, uh, before this state of uh, emergency. What's your uh, experience? Your tips? Your uh, uh, sure. ideas for that? Sure. I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, Paul Levinson really was one of the pioneers of uh, online learning. I was. Uh, I took my first online learning course at OISE, University of Toronto, in 1992. I was, uh, I was curious. I wanted to take a, uh, one of these online courses. And they, um, at the time, uh, 1992, the internet wasn't even open to the uh, general uh, public. Uh, 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 it was only available to big business, government, and research in, uh, universities like University of Toronto. So, but... Um, uh, I was reading papers of his, and that's where I first uh, came across um, uh, Paul Levinson. And uh, when I got into media ecology, then it was all um, read everything, else he's, everything else he's written. Um, but uh, I, um, I think that uh, a post-COVID uh, pedagogy is going to be a hybrid pedagogy. It's going to be... Uh, on campus-based programs, it's going to be one in which uh, students spend some time in the classroom, but uh, then they will also do quite a bit of time uh, working in groups, working collaboratively. One thing that online learning is particularly good for is team learning, learning collaboratively. Uh, business, particularly organizations, want people to be able to work in collaborative teams, and nowhere do you get that in traditional programs, particularly. Um, so uh, uh, now that's not to take away from the kind of courses I was teaching. Um, I, I was teaching, it was nothing to me, uh, quite a pleasure of teaching a course where there were students uh, located uh, all over the United States because I was teaching for a, an American university. Uh, but there were students from Europe. Uh, very often they would be um, mil military people. I, I remember someone in Turkey, someone in uh, Japan. Um, and when you get uh, people in uh, different places, it really, became, really becomes uh, a true reflection of the global village. 
And uh, I got my own training in online learning. I took a program with the University of London from their Faculty of Education back, uh, oh, I think around 1995, 96. And, um, and that, I had a great deal of pleasure in encountering people from everywhere in, uh, in online courses. Um, it also made it very possible for me uh, when we went, uh, when I started teaching uh, on a consistent basis online, we have a, a place in Mazatlan, Mexico in January, and I could be down there and I could be teaching, um, teaching my course, starting up my courses and uh, progressing from there. The advantages of online learning are that uh, you, can, you, can, you can do it from anywhere in the world, you can get high speed internet, uh, and you can teach it from anywhere in the world. And, uh, and it, I think we're going to have a hybrid system because now I think that uh, having um, online learning, which other universities have been building up all the time, the, the uh, enrollments in online learning courses in traditional campus-based universities have been going up every single year in North America, uh, whereas uh, some of the classroom-based programs have been declining. Um, why? Because it gives a flexibility of time when you take courses asynchronously um, as opposed to synchronously in real time. Um, uh, people have opportunities, students have opportunities to have a job, for example, uh, and, and do other things um, and don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time, uh, two or three times a week. So I think that's where we're going to uh, a hybrid form. The hybrid, and uh, I, I like to take this hybrid uh, approach uh, to uh, foster the idea that we play with uh, with the hybrid concepts. So we put together different words, we make puns, we make uh, uh, creations, we make a, a sense of our language, the, the actual language we use to make sense of uh, what's going on around us. And for instance, we do puns, we do create. Uh, uh, um, we do play with words uh, and create neologies. Uh, Pandemedia, it's a kind of neologism to some extent, uh, a focus on that. Uh, I like to, to pick uh, Bernadette, uh, the environment, environment, uh, beautiful and, and clever uh, neologies. So, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to launch uh, a context a contest. So uh, feel free to comment for folks at home. Uh, create your uh, your neologism, your pun, uh, playing with words, uh, and let's see what let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, Bernadette, uh, kick it off. Uh, environment okay so i invite uh, you all my friends uh, at home uh, on the facebook uh, marshall mcclellan's group uh, on youtube so please share your uh, uh, neologism your pun your probe to make sense of this and uh, i had another one uh, 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 genius flipped classroom so the classroom is flipped and uh, what else? Um, so, yeah, feel free to share your puns, your uh, neologies, your uh, words. Let's play with words. And by the way, before um, commenting, be reminded that if you want to show your name and profile on the uh, live stream, you should authorize streamyard.com slash Facebook. So basically the, um, the broadcasting app we are using is going to grab your name and uh, profile to put, uh, to put it uh, along with your comments. So don't forget to uh, authorize so you can see uh, your uh, names and comments. Let's see uh, here. In fact, otherwise it looks like a Facebook anonymous user social disexistencing i like it i like it very much uh this is a kind of a, a, a co-video drum uh, elena uh, would appreciate the cronenberg's uh, 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 citation here uh, adina corona hand 
Sheik, okay, clever, very clever, <laughs> very clever pun. Uh, what's going on? So, yes, blast your probes, blast your uh, your uh, uh, your imagination, Andrew. Village of the damned, damned, da, damned. Okay, damned. Wait, <laughs> clever. Uh, again, cognitive distancing, uh, cognitive distancing. Uh, Andrew again, uh, yeah, it's clever. Gov COVID and Goliath, uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, and by the way, that reminds me that, um, yeah, we are using the language of war and battle, the war against the virus, and so on. And uh, you know how language actual uh, actually affects the way we think uh, and. Uh, um, there are many people, of course, including myself, very skeptical of the the actual metaphor of the war, right? The war against the virus, rather than uh, than um, uh, taking it as a um, um, as a challenge, let's say, rather than a war. And I think we will explore that uh, in um, in the next uh, following weeks. Uh, Jean-François, Jean-François, viral, <laughs> viral networks. That's uh, obvious. Uh, uh, Andrew, Andrew is, is, is creating tones. Mask media, of course, uh, to, to the mask media uh, and the social distancing scene. Uh, 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 uh. Clinton, hello Clinton. Uh, how are Wrangle the might pop in? He is interested in asking for a URL. Howard. Howard Wrangle. Uh, virtual communities. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Clinton, just uh, send me a, a private message. Send me a message on Messenger and I can uh, I can figure it out, okay? So just send me a private mess message on uh, Messenger or an email if you wish, but a private mess message on Messenger is going to be even better. And... Um, it will work okay so please clinton uh, message me text me uh from robert uh butchman paul my extended family has been using zoom to play games uh, during weekly family nights many of them are technologically naive and are learning presentation and communication media skills while having fun so we are learning uh, we are learning a lot of new uh, skills right so during this uh, uh pandemic paul what's your what's your take on uh, what's your comment on uh, robert's uh, comment well i'm glad to hear it and as uh bob knows we're all technologically naive because this is new to all of us even if we've been doing it for 40 or 50 years but i think the key to getting a benefit from it is not being intimidated by a new technology. You know, if you think about learning how to drive a car, uh, first of all, the first time you get into a car and you haven't driven before, uh, it's a very frightening experience. You know, you uh, could at the very least run over a poor squirrel and, you know, something much bigger if you're not careful. But on the other hand, once we learn the basics, you know, we're fine. But on yet a third hand, we can never be totally knowledgeable of what's going to happen when we're driving in a car. We have to keep our wits about us. So that is true of all technology. And although online technology is uh, it's not a panacea, in fact, it's some, it, it is something that's very, very valuable, but it's also something that, and this gets back to what Andrew was saying, we do have to uh, keep our wits about us when we're using it. And, and I just don't want to throw one other thing in here is to show you what an irrepressible optimist I am. You know, there are some historians who say that the Black Plague and the bubonic plague, you know, all of these plagues that ravaged Europe in the 1300s, 1400s, in some cases wiping out as much as three-fifths of the population in some cities and some localities. But there are some historians who think that's what jump-started the Renaissance and our modern age, for better or worse, because it forced people 
to in effect take life more seriously. And uh, who knows, you know, it's always, uh, you know, a risk to predict that one thing is going to have such changes. But uh, I agree completely that the world is never going to be the same. But I think there is a chance that it could wind up being a better world, that, that the world of 2021, when we have vaccines, when we begin to live our lives again, uh, maybe we'll take life a little more seriously. And frankly, maybe here in the United States, those people in the Midwest will never again do such an idiotic thing as uh, voting for either Donald Trump or Jill Stein or something that led those states to uh, be won by Donald Trump. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Penny. So what happened to uh, to Paolo? He uh, maybe he. All fell right, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, my fault, my fault, my fault. <laughs> I was talking to myself, so sometimes we need okay. to self uh, uh, orient our thoughts. So I was talking to myself. So no, um, technically, I like to uh, invite um, Elena to comment on quarantine. And, and by the way, thank you, Paul. I saw Elena was crossing fingers. So that's why uh, it's up to you, Elena. You can comment on quarantine or, or <laughs> uh, social distancing as antibodies. Va Vaccine, Mateus, thank you. <laughs> uh, techno communication, uh, COVID, <laughs> COVID is our business. <laughs> this, is, this, is, uh, this is great, of course. Uh, Jean Francois, the viral village, the viral village, uh, of course, the viral village, and uh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, or the global vi virus, of course, uh, global virus, global virus. No, uh, Penny, uh, I think you know Penny. Hello, Penny Johnson. Uh, she's a wonderful uh, classical pianist, uh, and she is sharing uh, uh, the piano students she sh um, since she's been at home. Has lost, has lost some of her ability to communicate her thoughts clearly. She speaks much less than before and makes more nonverbal sounds, which I find quite unusual and interesting. I think it comes from not being around other kids at school and people in public in general. I would imagine there are many youth and adults alike whose communication skills are deteriorating through the lack of interaction. What about your students, uh, Ellen, Elena? You you said already something. So it changes the way we 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 uh, interact uh, with um, in, in a learning environment, right? Well, it, it actually in it. Italy, yeah, there is a difference between the way we teach uh, and the way you teach at the university level, I mean. We don't have much class interaction. Normally we have, uh, you know, the, 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 the lecture is uh, monodirectional. So when you ask uh, for questions, the students tend to be very quiet and, and then they might write to you or they can come to your office hours. It's so our final mark is not based on class participation, unfortunately. Uh, but because of this situation, of course, uh, uh, because we use a program that does not allow students to, uh, you know, show themselves, because if all cameras are on, the system goes down. So, of course, uh, when you have uh, 200 students or even 40 students and you have 80,000 students taking less than at the same time, you have to consider that as well. So because of that, actually, they're using the chat uh, way more. So it it's, uh, uh, it has improved, actually. They talk more. They talk more or they chat more. And from time to time, of course, you can uh, uh, have one student at a time to plug in and also show the face and, and talk. So uh, the response, uh, at, this is my experience, which is limited to my experience at the university, is good, actually. And this is also changing the way they see us. Uh, more as human beings and less as professors. Uh, I hope, uh, actually, they, they saw us as human beings even before, but because of the way the system is structured now, 
is uh, you know uh, it was not always the case actually so there was another type of social distance before which was more related to the statues or whatever they consider it to be your status as a professor so now it's more informal i like it way more because in fact uh, you know we call each other by name uh, to use professor here is not you know it's not the language you use on uh, on on, uh, on a chat you use Elena you use Paolo you use you know Paul etc and so uh, for me it's a good feedback actually so I don't experience what Bernadette was uh, uh, was experiencing actually not in my case uh, and not uh, uh, with the type of uh, classes I, I teach actually not yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In talking, thank you, thank you, Elena. And, and talking about multitasking and different uh, means of communication uh, simultaneously, uh, it is what uh, you are, you folks are doing right now. So because I see. Mm, our uh, folks today they are chatting we are talking i'm multitasking because i'm i get confused between the, the chat <laughs> comments uh, cameras uh, hello uh, so let me say hi to the camera as well uh, but even 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 better okay this way ciao hey how <laughs> so, you doing the, the the idea of multitasking is absolutely great and, uh, and 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 I think uh, we should seriously take it, that into account. Uh, uh, well, great, uh, Jean Francois. Again, uh, medication is the message. Uh, uh, Andrew, a vaccine is anything you can get away with. Uh, reference to another famous McLuhan's uh, probe. Uh, there was a uh, there was a good. They are all good ones, but. Uh, Co video conferencing, all right, yeah, a little bit weird, and uh, multi vaccine, all right, Andrew, Andrew, it's a volcanic uh, source of a pro. <laughs> oh, oh, great. Uh, 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 um, hold on, and okay, yeah, please keep going, keep uh, sharing your uh, your thoughts, uh, and because words matter, right, you know, I wanted to point this out, so the idea that the way we frame our thoughts, the way we uh, use our our words uh, uh, um, makes uh, a difference. Uh, uh, Elena, any comment on uh, on uh, the words we are using for this uh, uh, pandemia? Yes, Paolo. And yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, I want to comment. Uh, uh, well, these words are great. These expressions, I will borrow them all. So I'm copying you all. <coughs> but uh, I want to to pay attention to uh, the way we call this a situation because it is the English way of saying, right, lockdown. But I think I prefer the way the, the French are calling this a situation, which is confinement, confinement, uh, which is uh, uh, something that does not refer to the situation outside, but the way of you being locked inside, closed inside. And it's a word that also in Italian translates as confinamento, which uh, is very similar to the word confino, which uh, is something that was used during the fascist regime to keep the political dissident uh, away and to lock them uh, in, a, in a special place. And, uh, and I think that's important too, because the, 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 the social distancing and the lockdown that imposes that situation on us is, uh, is a way to name uh, what we are experiencing which is not necessarily negative because you tend to associate that to you know uh, being safe and preserving the others uh, as well so it's a kind of social responsibility to be distant but after two months at home because <coughs> Italy has been on uh, since the end of February actually uh, it feels more like house arrest and so it's another word that I would use now and I know it's a provocative word, but it's a house arrest, uh, which uh, is something that uh, forbids us from going out. Uh, we can't, uh, in Italy too, we can't uh, walk in our park. Uh, we can't, uh, you know, do so many things. And, uh, and we don't see the end of this. They are trying to actually reopen a few things here and there, but there is no... no uh, 
real plan or real uh, uh, way to be, you know, finally uh, freed, of course. So house arrest is another term that I would uh, use uh, to define the way I feel now as an individual <coughs> forced by the lockdown uh, to stay indoor and to be, uh, you know, in this situation. So house arrest, which is a psychological mm. dimension that, of course, uh, uh, does not stop me from uh, uh, behaving uh, from respecting, you know, the others, from appreciating what the technology is doing. But in fact, uh, my freedom is limited for a good cause, maybe, but it's limited. And this is uh, uh, after, you know, eight weeks of this is uh, heavy on us psychologically. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're right. And uh, well, I'm, 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 I'm so happy we, we were able to spend uh, yeah, almost two hours. They flew away in a, in a blink of an eye. So, and I like to to keep it timing so to close by ten p.m. So we we could keep going uh, all night long till early morning forever. But we are not so uh, uh, bad. So uh, I like to have a final medical round in order to going towards the uh, conclusion. Then I have a couple of announcement so first of all i will start with andrew andrew are you still there um <coughs> 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 brilliant and I think a lot of people are very very happy to be able to join this um, who didn't know that a community like this existed so I'm very excited you're doing this and you're going to do it for the next few weeks anyway um, you'll probably get a lot of messages asking you to keep it going for longer than you want to um, yes, it. <laughs> but look I want to on, on a more serious note um, I mentioned that there are going to be some serious effects from the increase in screen time that people are doing. Um, and I think, you know, the best you can do is if you're forced to spend more time on screen is do what you can to balance it. Uh, and that means read. Um, and the medium is the message means that it doesn't matter if you're reading, um, you know, a bathroom magazine or understanding media um, the point is to get your brain accustomed to reading words on a, on a physical page um, and do as much reading as you can. Uh, you can't go to the library and get a book, so you'll have to do with whatever you have in the apartment or the local paper or whatever. But, um, you know, read, read, read and, and save your brain a little bit that way. Um, so sorry to get heavy, but. Hey, uh, take care, everybody, and stay safe, and we love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank you for your words. And uh, um, it came to my mind another pun, pun the mind, pun the mind. So the way to foster our mind, actually, it's uh, from one well, from my friends in Italy, uh, Davide Bennato, that we will invite soon to uh, this uh, Monday night webinars. So thank you, Andrew, for your final remarks. And then uh, merry-go-round. Uh, uh, Alex, uh, what's your final uh, take, your final remark? Well, I, I want to thank you for um, doing this in, in uh, my group. And I've always felt that uh, the internet as a platform has the potential to be uh, the, the most powerful learning platform of any. And uh, too often it doesn't happen that way. And, um, but we see the potential in, in, in something like this. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Paul, Paul, your, your take, your final remark. Rapid fire tetrad on the impact of the pandemic. It amplifies our vulnerability. It obsolesces any confidence we have in the government and in medicine. It retrieves Henry David Thoreau, the virtue of solitude, and it reverses into your guess is as good as mine. 
Thank you, Paolo. I enjoyed this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'd like to thanks, thank you again uh, all uh, folks uh, on uh, uh, our community, on the Marshall McLuhan's uh, uh, Facebook uh, group, uh, on the YouTube channel, kindly provided by the McLuhan uh, Institute. Uh, uh, you all for commenting. So uh, how many comments there are? So there we had, I'll tell you precisely, we had... Uh, uh something like 130 comments so this is nice because people i mean they can chat right uh, while uh, the, the the seminar the webinar is going on so it's a, it's a great uh, it's a great joy to see all this kind of engagement and excitement for that so uh, before uh, my final remarks first of all i didn't uh, uh, introduce my secret object so I'm going to just show you this, but next week uh, I'll tell you what it is. This is a special gift uh, from Elena, actually. It's a special, uh, and, oh, yeah, the brothers, we have the brothers. So uh, keep joining uh, us uh, for the Monday night webinars uh, every Monday night, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Toronto time. And so if you join me next week, I'll tell you, who is, what is this little reddish uh, um, object that uh, makes sense to me to face this uh, global pandemic. Also, I like to make uh, uh, this Monday night webinars even uh, uh, more creative. I like to bring more art, poetry. We will have uh, some uh, artists in the upcoming weeks. However, if you would like to share some artistic, creative uh, uh, probes and uh, contributions, so please step in, drop me an email. Uh, you can reach me out uh, here, paolo.granada.utoronto.ca. So I will be uh, really, really glad to uh, bring you in. So if you have nice ideas uh, to make this Monday night webinars uh, uh, creative, exciting, uh, and particularly inspiring for uh, for our minds. So please step uh, step in. So what else? Uh, um, yes, I think that's all. Next Monday uh may the 4th uh, may the 4th uh, i can be more precise we have a few uh, special guests so we will be uh announcing the the names uh, soon so they're already there so may the 4th uh, be with you next monday night webinar <laughs> it's also my daughter's birthday uh, thank you alicia for laughing and uh, well Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you next Monday, May the 4th, 8 p.m. on Facebook, live on Facebook and live on YouTube. And well, my final uh, goodbye is stay safe, stay sage. Bye-bye. Ciao, bye-bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao.